Okay, in the second part of this video series on cross-site request forgery, I want to talk a bit about some previous attacks on huge websites like ING or Google. In 2007, Google Mail's form that is used to add a filter to emails was vulnerable to CSRF attacks. This meant that if you were logged into Google, an attacker could add a filter just by getting you to visit one of his websites. The attacker basically owned your account and was able to read all your email if he so chose. This filter remained in your settings even after Google fixed this vulnerability, so the only way for the user to get rid of it was to visit his settings and remove the filters manually. In 2008, a vulnerability on ING's website was detected that allowed an attacker to create additional accounts on behalf of an arbitrary user. It was also possible to move funds out of a customer's account. I haven't tried to verify this, but the source of this vulnerability claims that this was the first CSRF vulnerability that, that allowed the transfer of funds from a financial institution. Clearly, cross-site request forgery is not a mistake that only amateurs make. Scary, isn't it? Up until 2008, YouTube was extremely vulnerable to CSRF attacks. An attacker was able to add videos to a person's favorites list, add himself as a person's friend, send a message on behalf of a user, and more. Twitter was vulnerab vulnerable to a CSRF attack up until February of this year. The function to change your status by, ch by tacking it onto... Yeah, I clearly can't speak today. Let's try that again. The function to change your status by tacking it onto the home link was not protected, which the attacker took advantage of. He spread a link throughout Twitter that updated a user's status, causing their followers to visit and subsequently, subsequently post the link themselves, and on and on and on. Speaking of Twitter, I just signed up for Twitter myself. Up until today I refused to sign up because I just didn't get the point of, the, of this service. Now I took the plunge and... Well, let me tell you, I love it. Give me a shout out and follow, and follow me at twitter.com slash as soon as you can. As always, if you have any questions at all regarding this course, please don't hesitate to contact me at arne at aachenmethod.com. I try to answer every email within 24 hours. Next up, in part 3, I finally talk about how you can write your PHP code so that your web applications so that your web applications won't be vulnerable. Maybe you can use that knowledge to teach those folks at ING or Google a lesson or two. And maybe by then I finally learned how to speak.